Welcome to the Great Detectors of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectors.net. Give us a call, 208-991-4783. And become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we get into today's episode, I want to encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up a copy of uh, my book, All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo. It's my uh, new ebook. It's available for the Kindle, uh, as well as uh, Kindle reading apps. I know they have it for BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, and iPad. And we take a look at seven great detectives, and we draw 12 great life lessons from them, including Columbo, Nero Wolf, Sherlock Holmes, Father Brown, and uh, Dan Holliday. It's available for $1.99 off the Kindle store. And if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can also get it for free as part of the Kindle Owners Lending Library. All right, well, it's time for today's episode of Let George Do It. Uh, This one is called Second Degree Affection. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Second Degree Affection, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine... First of all, I want it clearly understood that I have no particular affection for my brother. There was a time when we shared a house together here in town, but he moved his activities to Industrial City, and his friends went with him. And so did his own stupidity. And so did whatever real love I ever had for him. However, Mr. Valentine, I intend to help my brother in whatever way I can. And to do that, I need you. I need you immediately. Because his name is Ricky Stebbins. And if you've read the newspapers, I'm sure you're aware how close my brother is to... to being hung for murder. I'm sorry, Bud, I haven't seen a girl like that around here. This is where she said she'd be, George. Yeah, I know, Brooks. And... Well, might ask the bartender, or you might sit down and join me for a drink. Stebbins, you say? Rhoda Stebbins? Hey, bartender. Never mind, Buster, never mind. You were parked here. I just thought you might know. That's what I say. Sit down. Tell me about Look, yourself. Look, buttonhole artist. Skip it. Sure. Oh, lady. It's a lonesome bar. That's all, girl. She's heading back to the person's table. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a Major, minute. Keep him busy. Don't worry. I'll be right here. Hello. Miss Stebbins? Oh, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, you wrote me a letter. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I've been making some telephone calls. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, we spotted a purse sitting here. Wondered if it was yours. There's a man over there drinking soda water and pretending he feels it who's been watching the purse, too. So I mentioned your name out of curiosity. He wanted to sidetrack me. Why? Watchdog? Flattering, isn't it? Having people pay attention. But I've never met him. There's another man waiting outside. I know who he is. The fat one? Yeah. Fat Lindell. Different type. I know. Gangster to you, I suppose. No. Just former employer to your brother. That's enough. You see, I've done some reading up. You don't want my case, do you? I don't know yet. But your brother's Ricky Stebbins. He's the kind of people I don't like. Neither are any of these others, then neither am I. Just a preamble. Invitation to be honest with each other. All right. We'll get along. Okay. My assistant, Miss Brooks, is over there running interference, so make it fast. My brother killed a woman a month ago out in Industrial City. His trial's being held here in town. It was a holdup, of course. That was his specialty. And he was always fairly successful when he worked for someone who could do his thinking for him. Like Fat Lindell? This time he worked alone, apparently. And of course he was caught. 
The woman owned a ticket agency with a check cashing service attached. And he he held her up and shot her. They caught him before he could even get out of industrial. My brother's not the kind of people I like either. So now he's on trial for murder. Today I went to the jury. That's what I was telephoning about. So it's a little late in the date to be looking for new evidence. What do you want me for, Paul Bearer? Mr. Valentine, I've only visited Ricky a couple of times in the cell. He he doesn't want me mixed up in all this, but I think he knows something he won't tell. You mean to get him off? I mean anybody who helped the state at least gets off first degree, doesn't he? Well, that depends. Court commutes to life sometimes. That is, if he really has anything to say. I want you to come with me. Ricky's back in the jail now. It'll be visiting hours pretty soon. I... I haven't the slightest idea what it is. I really haven't, but I want you to talk to him. And if you won't tell, maybe we could find out ourselves. I, I mean, well, he should have every chance to live, shouldn't he? What's the matter with his lawyer? There's nothing he can find out about it. Hey, why are all these people watching? I don't know. I tell you, I... Come I on, just... lady. This whole story sounds like so much... Oh. Mr. Valentine, I'm just a public stenographer. I used to be a school teacher until they found out what my brother was and fired me. Yeah. I've never liked him or what he stood for, but he is my brother. If I get upset over what I only look upon as a duty or a hey, responsibility, a loyalty... George. What's the matter, Brooksy? Did that guy make a pass at you? Oh, no, no. He's very nice. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to knock your purse on the floor. It's all right. I can get it. George, that man's name is Gus. He's a commercial insurance investigator. He's been watching... What's that? What did she say? Nothing. Skip it. I can figure things out for myself. Miss Stebbins, I know why you're being followed, being watched. I know what it is your brother hasn't told you. Sixty thousand dollars. Oh, well, perhaps the newspaper. That woman but... your brother killed who owned a check cashing service. It was Saturday, just before factory closing. He took almost sixty thousand uh, dollars. Yes, that's right. But, but and that's I... never been seen or heard from since. Sixty thousand dollars. Now, where is it? Well, I... Sure, I... that's your brother's secret. Now, come on, let's be honest with each other. I, I didn't want you to think that's all I wanted to know, to, to, to find out where the money is. You wouldn't believe I just want to help my brother, even if I don't have any affection for him. You, you wouldn't believe me. Why do people do things? And don't look mad again, either. I didn't say I wouldn't take your case. Well, come on. We'll try it for size. We're still a little early, I think. That's his window up there, second from the right to the floor. Mm, plenty of bars on it. Mm. You can ask them how soon it'll be. They're pretty strict about visiting. Well, look, you go on. We'll wait for you. Well, all right. We'll be I... right here. Don't worry. All right. Well, George? Well, it must be a little tough to have that kind of a brother. <laughs> don't be a sentimental sucker, darling. I know, I know. She's really so upset she can't... Sure, slap your face. I heard... Good actress, but the wrong words, that's all. Talking about her lack of affection, so you'd be impressed with how much she really cares. Okay, cynic, okay, skip it. But I stayed out here for a reason. Hmm? Yeah, I want to watch the parade, the followers. Now, uh, there's your friend Gus down the block trying to look the other way while he gets his shoe shine. Yeah, he's been following her for weeks, George. His company has to cover the money that was stolen. Uh-huh. Fat Lindell, I don't see him. But, George, these people watching her, why? Unless she was mixed up with her brother in hey, some way. Got a match, friend? Uh, what? Uh, oh, 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 yes, yes. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah there, there, there. Thanks. It's all right. You keep him. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, what are you looking for up there? Huh? Airplanes? Or, uh, you interested in jail control? What'd you say? I don't get mad. But from your haircut and complexion, I'd guess you generally stare at them from the other side. Well, I don't understand you. Uh, uh, keep the matches. Second window from the right, third floor. What is it? Got a friend up there? I said I'm sorry. Excuse me. Well, somebody else wants it. I noticed him, too. Hey, who was that guy? Uh, what? Hey, he comes here every day and just stands and looks. I tried to sell him a paper and he shuffles off like he did now. It's me, buddy. There's a lot I don't know. George, yet. look at those headlines. Yeah, Stebbins case. They work fast, don't they? Well, it's all over. Jury gives quick verdict. Ricky Stebbins guilty of murder in first degree. It's the 
the money, I tell you. That's why people are curious about them. There isn't any mystery. Look, Lieutenant Riley, I've got to get back outside. Her sister will be out there by now. Somebody gave her a bum steer. She didn't even know the jury was out. Well, neither did I. They brought him back here, didn't say anything. Now we've got to take him back to court again. Hey, what kind of a three-ring circus? It's a high-speed job, I tell you. They're going to sentence him today. Now. Look, Riley, I just tore over here to ask you if it's possible that Ricky Stebbins could have known anything to help his own case. That's why I want to see him. It took the jury five minutes to say guilty. Stebbins couldn't have helped himself. It was open and shut. One, two, three. <laughs> there were eyewitnesses to that murder he committed. Five of them. Yeah. Yeah, he walked into this place all alone, held up the dame and killed her. So what could he know except where he hid the money? Well, his sister's waiting for him. She'll be tearing her hair out. Ah, uh, sure, money. Money, that's why people do things. I'd still like to talk to him. <laughs> well, they're in a hurry. They'll have him put in a car out front. Look, Riley, nobody wants to get a first-degree rap if he can help yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there they are, see? Across the sidewalk. But if you want my advice, you'll ask him about a sister who claims she's got no... Hey, what the... What's that? Look, it's Stebbins. He's falling. Dead. Ricky Stebbins, dead. Told you, Lieutenant, I was just going to get him in the car. He was on my arm. I heard the shot for when that handcuff pulled me down. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Say, Mike. Mike, get the rest of those people across the street. The uh, sister, you see her any place, Valentine? There's Brooksy. No, I don't. A man handcuffed to a policeman gets murdered. A man who's going to get the chair anyway. A man who knows where the money is. Now I ask you, what kind of a... Huh? Excuse me, here's the gun I shot him with, sir. What? Well, I'll be a... The guy with the matches. It's the first chance I had. First time he's been out in the open. But I killed him, didn't I? Yeah, friend, yeah. If you say so, you killed him, yeah. all right? A man who would have died anyway, legally. I know it. And then you just step up and hand us the gun when you might have tried to get lost in this crowd. A boat. Who are you, anyway? Hmm? Come on, man, talk or I'll... Wait a minute, Riley. You might be wrong about why people do things. About whether there's a mystery or not. Come on, speak up, friend. Why should I? What difference does it make? I... I killed him. You won't be cheated. I'll take his place for you. It's over now. You can send me to the electric chair. It's what I want. First degree. <laughs> Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. It's no miracle when Chevron Supreme gasoline makes your car run smoother and more powerfully than ever before. It's not even a secret why more and more Western motorists choose Chevron Supreme for that new car feeling. Let's look at the facts. Most raw gasolines contain impurities that form engine-sticking gum. The only way to get rid of the impurities is to refine them out. Chevron Supreme, which is made from carefully selected crude, is the gasoline that's super refined to prevent power robbing gum. Super refined to keep your car's fuel line, carburetor, and spark plugs free of gum. That's why Chevron Supreme gives your car faster starting every time. Smoother pickup in traffic, super hill climbing power, and full mileage in the kind of driving you do. So for that new car feeling, Get super-refined Chevron Supreme at Standard Stations and independent Chevron gas stations. At all these stations, you can count on quality products and top service. For here's where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. It's all for money, says Lieutenant Riley. There's no mystery about it. That's why people do things. But if your name is George Valentine, you're not sure you agree because Ricky Stebbins, a convicted murderer, has been killed. Shot down on the street as he was handcuffed to the arm of a policeman. 
Yet his killer, instead of running, has walked straight up to the police and given them the gun. And why? Because he wanted to do it. Because he's quite willing to face the electric chair. So he's a nut. He's as loony as a coot. Sure, Riley, sure. Let's see that stuff from Ricky Stebbins. Oh, I've already gone over it. It's this guy I want to figure out. This guy sitting there staring at nothing. Come on, who are you, I said. Leave me alone. What difference does it make? Yeah, yeah, you see. Oh, but it is the money, isn't it? You were working with Stebbins, right? You were in on the original crime of his, and you know where the money's hidden, huh? What money? I don't know. Leave you didn't want to give him a chance to tell anybody else where the money is, so you killed hold him, Hold it, huh? Riley, hold it. Leave him alone for a minute, will you? What's this note in Stebbins' stuff? Right three, left 14. Looks like a combination. Oh, sure, sure. I'm way ahead of you. He must have just written it, see, in jail after he heard his verdict. The only reason he'd write it down is to give it to somebody. Yeah, yeah, when he knew he was going to be sentenced to the chair. Might be a locker somewhere, huh? I've already figured where Stebbins checked the money. My sergeant's heading for Industrial City right now. Well, how about Miss uh, Brooks tagging along? Oh, huh? everybody gets in the act. But what I don't understand... Oh, don't be so modest, Riley. You've at least figured it out that if Stebbins just wrote this note, then he hadn't told anybody where the money was yet. He'd kept his secret. Uh, sure. Sure, unless there was an accomplice like this this punk here, and of course his sister. Who else could get near him in court? Who else did he care two pins for or think of when he knew he could never save the money for himself? Oh, Valentine, I thought you were a sucker for a sob story. Oh, stop it, would you? First things come first. Sure, Riley, I'll see the girl. Sure, we'll find this fat Lindell who's been tagging her. He used to work with her brother. I sent out an alarm for Lindell already. Only, Riley, the first thing I can see is... We're right back where we started. Leave me alone. Now look, friend, Ricky Stebbins should have died, maybe. The state was going to take care of that. I couldn't let him. I wanted to do it. Well, aren't you going to say anything in your own defense? I killed him. There's nothing to say. Oh, this guy obviously did it for the money, Riley. Sure, sure. And he wants a first-degree rap so he can enjoy the money better. Right three, left 14. Well, I'm sorry, miss. But, Sergeant, you said this was the only public check room that used combination locks. Here in Industrial City, that's right, Miss Brooks. Well, it don't show, and it would show on our listings. But this is it right here, look. Right yeah, I three. know this is it, and that's box 412, and you want to see what's in box 412? Okay, I'm aware because I saw the guy put it in just yesterday. Oh, all right, okay, I'll cooperate. There. Golf club. What in the name of... But you got to be shown. So I show you. But the combination... They change, miss. Will you give me a chance? A month ago, the combination you got was on box 379. A month ago? When that crime was committed. The numbers are rotated, don't you see? Because in this crazy check room, there's a maximum limit of one week. You mean, this is one of your numbers... And if Stebbins did put the money here, that box 379 or whatever you said, then it only could have stayed a week. That's the storage limit. Yeah, yeah but Stebbins has been in jail for a month. Now, what happens at the end of the week if you just leave something here? Then we open it and impound the contents. But don't you see, that didn't happen. The records don't show. What do you think I'm so mad about? The money was here. It must have been. But do I get a whack at the reward? Huh. I tell you, Sergeant, we've been through every box and it's not here now. Oh, wait a minute. Ricky Stubbins was caught very fast that day a month ago. He checked the money here, but he certainly wouldn't have had time to get it out again. Sergeant, it proves Ricky Stubbins had an accomplice. George, don't you Wait see what... Wait a minute, what... This is it. Yeah, here we are, room 12. Oh, well, it's not much of a place, is it? Is this where you live, George? That man in jail? His name's would... Boxer. We found out that much. <sighs> it's a 50-cent room. Mm -hmm. George, if this Mr. Boxer doesn't care what happens to him, you'd think he'd cooperate by... He collapsed by... on us, Angel. Oh, sure, he'll talk in time. He's not trying to hold back or anything. He just hasn't been eating regularly. Mm -hmm. Not much baggage. No. Toothbrush, extra shirt. I think we guessed right about his being recently out of prison. Riley's checking that angle. 
Oh, he might have been mixed up with Ricky Stubbins before. Brooksy, all we know is he's a guy who's been standing outside that jail just waiting for one thing. His first chance to get close enough to Stebbins to kill him. People do things because of money, Riley says. Where is the money now? No, no, I ain't going George, to... look here. Huh? No, I, I don't mean it. It's just a letter. The little guys? Uh, boxer. Mr. Frank Boxer. Addressed to him in prison. Ah. Tennessee, we can check that. There's several of them all in the same hand. Listen. Uh-huh. Darling, I'm so excited to think your parole will be coming soon. To actually think that I can walk down the street with my husband and know that all the trouble is behind, and now he's going straight forever. It's almost more than I can... Husband? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's all like that, George. So are the others. My darling husband. Here. And now that my ticket agency and check cashing service is so well check established. Cashing. And there's a signature. Return address industrial city. Why, people do things. It was Boxer's wife that Ricky Stebbins murdered. So everybody's wrong. We checked through the prison. Boxer wasn't even released from back there until the day after it happened. What's he say about it? Uh, still nothing. What would you say? He didn't know his wife had been killed until he got out here. We found a bellboy at the first place he stayed. Yeah. Said Boxer just sat there in his room staring at the newspaper and reading those letters for two solid days. I asked him if he and his wife ever had trouble and... He started to cry. He's going straight, apparently. Yeah, he hadn't treated her so well. But it was going to be different. Going to start fresh. We uh, found the hot shop where he bought the gun. Guy said he looked like he was in a trance. For killing the rattlesnake, he said. He had to do it himself, he said. Mm-hmm. So that's it. So that's the case. Huh? Yeah. Wife was all he had to live for, and now... That's the terrible part. Ricky Stebbins would have been executed. Only now, it's poor Mr. Boxer, who's in real trouble. Well, you can't take a human life into your own hands. But in this case, the sympathy will cut it down to manslaughter. A year or two, maybe. But he won't even ask for that. George, where are you going? See a lady about some cash. Where are you going to find Rhoda, George? Oh, that's easy, Angel. I just go down to... The... Oh, hey, there you are. Huh? Uh, Lieutenant, the boys just brought in a guy I think you ought to take a look at. Oh, okay, okay. What were you going to say, George? Just go down to the insurance company who's been watching yourself carefully. Only, Brooksy, don't you see who that guy is? That drunk they just brought in? Valentine, this guy's been slumped. The insurance man. It's Gus. Oh, my head. I watched like a hawk, I tell you. I haven't let her out of my sight for one solid month. Yeah, yeah. Since five minutes after they arrested that no good brother Okay, of okay. Where is she now? Oh, day and night, I tell you. Like a hawk I watched. I had assistance. I made notes. Come on, I... come on, Gus. Come snap on, what out of it. To you? Who, who hit you? Come I on. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't feel so good. Coming around the corner. I, I, I don't know what hit me. But I was tailing her. Back to her brother's house. This is the house. Doors open, lights left on. Nobody home. I don't believe it, do you? Ah! Upstairs. Come on. Where are you, Miss Kevins? Look out, he's got a gun. Look out. George. Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Lindell, so you're the guy. He he followed me. He knocked out that door. Robert Lindell, I said, drop it. Oh, Oh, thank heaven. The pony, the gun is... All right, take it easy, Miss Kevins. You're all right. Come on, on your feet, Lindell. Let's go. I didn't do anything. Oh, no, not much. He's been here at the house every night this week. He admitted it when I'd been away or in town. He's come here. What if I have? Looking for money, Buster, is that it? I claim the reward. That's what I do. I claim the reward. Yeah, what reward? Well, there is one. Must be one of some sort. Now, look, Buster. I found it, I tell you. It's right here, stuffed into the back of the radio. That's where she put it. Well, I'll be... Wrapped in newspapers. Bundles of it. The 60,000 bucks. 60,000 reasons why people do things. Mr. Valentine, I didn't know it was there. Oh, 
Your name's Stebbins, isn't it, sister? That's good enough for me. She hired you, Valentine, to make Lindell think she didn't know where the money was. Well, that's not a bad stunt to take the heat off Are of you, uh, finished, Riley? Ah, now, look here, I Robert. asked her to get Boxer in here, too. Okay, here he is. Thanks, Sergeant. Yes, Mr. Valentine. But we know all about him. Who's that, Mr. Valentine? man who shot your brother, Miss Devon? She's, uh... Oh, you I didn't care him because you knew Mr. Boxer. All right, all right, Skip it. Riley, tell me something. Yeah? Wasn't the Stebbins house ever searched for that money before? Of course it was. The day after the crime, a month ago. Uh-huh. So it got there since then. Lindell's been looking for it ever since, apparently, so that rules him out. It's a cinch he didn't put it there. But that doesn't prove she didn't. The newspaper's wrapped around the money. Look at the dates on them, Riley. Huh? Well, three weeks ago, so what? Think back and remember what the insurance man said. That he or his assistants have been watching Rhoda Stebbins ever since five minutes after they arrested her brother. Well, why didn't they see her go get it? George, that's right. Yeah. Stebbins himself could have moved it. He couldn't have moved it. He was in jail. Go on, go on. Oh, go. Miss Stebbins, you told me you thought your brother had a secret that might have saved him from the chair. Well, the location of the money wasn't a big enough thing. But he might have wanted to tell who hired him to hold up that place, kill Mrs. Boxer. Hey, now, wait a minute. Mr. Valentine, I don't think that he... And that somebody could have been a man who was still in jail. What are you talking about, George? I, uh, I, I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do, Boxer. While you were still in jail, just in case you needed an alibi or anything went wrong. Only it did go wrong anyway. Stebbins got caught. Oh, you must have sweated plenty when you read that in the papers. No, I didn't. I, I don't know what you're trying to do. The poor tragic convict whose wife wanted him back, who'd been mean to her before, but now she had a nice lucrative business. Sure, sure, maybe she loved you. But you paid her back in spades, brother, didn't you? Oh, nice guy. She was all I had in the world. I wouldn't. I've heard all the neat little clues you planted. Moping in hotel rooms, buying guns in a trance. You know that when Stebbins heard the sentence of the chair, he'd tell about you. The busty, you pulled the most daring stunt I ever heard of. You walked right up and killed him and handed the gun to the police. It was the only way you could save yourself. But he confessed to Ricky's murder, Mr. Valentine. That's right, George. Yes, Boxer. You pulled out all the stops, all right. Because with that trail of sludge you left behind you, you knew what had happened. I heard what you said, Riley. He'd get manslaughter maybe a year or two, maybe. Look, why why would I do a thing like hiding the money here? Why don't you what? stop giving me the feed line, Buster? They go back down your throat. You never wanted that money. That was Stebbins' 60000 His rake off for killing your wife. You knew you'd get another 60000 all for yourself. But George... After all, Riley, it was his wife's money, wasn't it? Well, what do you think those investigators are so anxious about? Unless every penny of it was insured. Kind of neat, George. Hmm? How to make sixty thousand dollars twice as big? Stebbins would have gotten his, and then Boxer would have collected the insurance on it. Oh, and... sure, 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 Bussy. Very neat, nice people. He must have planned it all out from those long letters his wife wrote about her business. Yeah, but he's going to get the whole works now, instead of a couple of years and a sympathetic pat on the back from the jury. George, why did you believe Rhoda in the first place? Well, because she tried so hard to be honest, I guess. To pretend she didn't have any particular affection for him. Yeah. Do you think she really did? Well, Angel, let's call it a case of second-degree affection. Remember the last time you stopped at a hotel? Chances are that you appreciated the kind of service you got, or you wouldn't have stayed at that hotel very long. Well, the same spirit of first-class service marks standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations. Wherever you drive in the West, at these stations you're valued as a guest. and You need never feel obligated to buy something. These men know that if you're satisfied with the care they give your car, like inspecting the tires and battery, they can hope to see you another day. For them, it's just plain good public relations to keep you pleased with their car saver services. So wherever you drive, rely on independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. 
High-grade service and top-quality products like Chevron Supreme Gasoline are why these stations say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Doris Singleton was heard as Rhoda, Mark Lawrence as Boxer, Eddie Fields as Gus, Larry Dobkin as the Sergeant, and Gigi Pearson as Helen. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, once again, we see a bit of a battle here between cynicism and optimism about human nature. And the result is a a split decision. uh, Because one party was clearly doing everything for the money while the other uh, was uh, being truthful. Um, this this one is interesting as well, and I think this is the great strength of uh, Let George Do It uh, and George Valentine as a detective, uh, in that he um, does not let the obvious uh, sidetrack him from what the truth is. And uh, that is very important, uh, because... Because as this case illustrated, those two are not uh, uh, usually or always the same thing. And his ability to avoid being blinded while everybody else, uh, even uh, uh, Lieutenant Riley and sometimes even Brooksy, are falling for uh, the line of the uh, uh, villain. Uh, It's always an interesting uh, process to see. Well, we turn now to our listener comments and feedback. These from Podcast Alley. Best ever, uh, says one listener, and love your site, keep up the good work. Well, thank you so much for your support and your great comments. We will be back tomorrow with Sherlock Holmes, and join us next Wednesday for another episode of Let George Do It. In the meanwhile, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Give us a call, 208-991-4783, and become one of our friends on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.